This is Harry Connick Sr., and you're listening to the Paul Leslie Hour. I wanted to ask you about this record store that you owned. Uh huh. Or actually, there were two. At, at one time, that's right. We we when uh, I had worked in in uh, Casablanca in Morocco, I had gone over there as a civilian after I, I did my tour of duty in the in the service during World War II. When I was over there, and I came home, I got married in Tangier, and married to my the, the mother of my two dear children. And we came home, and I was in bed, and I was I was laid up. It was a pro. I had tuberculosis, and it was a prolonged period of, of bed rest, very strict bed rest, in addition to the medication. And my wife Anita wasn't from here, and so we came back. We were uprooted very summarily in Casablanca or Nuasur, actually, where I was working. We were brought back home after a long, circuitous route, finally ended up back in New Orleans, and she wanted to work, and she went out to find a job, and it was very difficult for her to uh, get work because at that time, also to today, in a, in a certain extent, New Orleans is extremely provincial, and if you don't know somebody, it's, it's less of that today. Mm-hmm. So I don't anyone who hears me not come to New Orleans for a job, but uh, she couldn't get a job. And so, so she she came to the hospital one day and said, you know, I think I'm going to open up a record shop with greeting cards and little electronic equipment, They're like recorders and things such as that. So I said, okay, so she did. She did it on her own, God bless her. I came home shortly after she opened, and after I was able to recover, I went down and worked with her. But that's how that came about. And then after a couple of years, I mean, we, it was a small business, but it was a very successful business. And uh, it, it helped me get through law school and helped uh, Anita get through undergraduate and law school too. We, uh, After a couple of years, though, we opened up an, a second uh, a business, a branch of it, and all we did was lease space in another building. We had two businesses, and one day we sitting down at supper, and I think we both came to the realization that this is really not what we wanted to do uh, with our lives, and we wanted to be able to give something and do more and accomplish more. So uh, I, 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 I told her that I'd like to go to law school I go to undergraduate school and get my degree. I wasn't thinking too much of law school at that time because law school came about while I was in my finishing up my undergraduate work at Loyola. And uh, anyway, she had gone to Monmouth College in New Jersey, and we both decided to go back to school. So we split shifts. I would work in the afternoons, and she would work in the morning. I asked, my classes were scheduled from 8 o'clock in the morning until noontime. And her classes, she she arranged to have them in the afternoon until 5 or 6 o'clock, whatever. So I'd go to school early in the morning, and she'd go to work, and I'd walk in at 12.30. I'd pick up special orders, incidentally, on the way home for kids who would come in and want a record today, and we didn't have it. They would have it tomorrow. Hmm. Uh, And uh, so we had a great special order department, and... uh, so I'd walk in and, and take over, and she would walk out, you know, and we'd meet that night at home. And we went through that for about four years. Uh, but it was it was worth it. So it was a good business and a successful business, but one that was very limiting from a uh, challenging point of view, you know? Yeah, you, you wanted to do something that would be more meaningful to you. Yeah, I, I think that we felt we had something to give. She was my, my wife, Adita, was a very bright lady, smart, as I said, and uh, she was very good with people. She was very helpful to people. She helped people. At, they would people would come into Studio A, our record shop, and and uh, they were outright mean sometimes. Some mm-hmm. of them, and I used to tell. Her, I said, "Here comes your <laughs> your." You grouch, you take care of this one, you know. <laughs> so she would she'd laugh and she'd go out. After a while, that guy became a regular customer. And a, he said, but I'd like to for your wife to wait on me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. 
<laughs> and uh, we made some good friends that way. Friends that that the people that after we closed the record shop were still friends. People lived in a great neighborhood, uh-huh. and uh, there were a lot of young kids and a lot of family people. So this was in one of the shops were in Lakeview. But anyway, she was good about that, you know. Did I answer your question? Did you ask me a question? Did I answer oh, your question? Yes, yeah, you, sh- you sure did. You sure did. You mentioned a second ago. You said your two lovely children. One of the recordings that you made is a duet, and it's the song "Rocky Mountain Moon," and it's a duet with Mr. Harry Connick Jr. Was there ever a time when you thought, you know what, Harry Connick Jr. is going to be a musician? Oh, immediately. Immediately. Uh, not not when he came out of the womb, but shortly thereafter. <laughs> and what demonstrated that to us was his incredible time. My wife, his mother, noticed it when he was in a high chair. He couldn't have been two years old. We brought records home from the Studio A record shop, and we'd play them. So we had a lot of music on, and he would sit there sometimes and start, to, if he had a, a spoon or something in his hand, and he, he'd start hitting on the tray that was on his his, be, his high chair. And Anita one time said, oh, listen to that. I said, yeah, it's very noisy. <laughs> you know? and, and she said, no, no, listen to it. We, we looked at each other and she said, his timing is impeccable. His mother, she came from a family of musicians. Her brother was a very good, a very accomplished musician. So he, he, he would come in and stand out on foot of our bed sometimes and when he was maybe four and I had a mandolin that that Anita had given to me when I was in the hospital in Dybert Memorial Hospital down here in New Orleans it was called a Nick Maniloff method of playing the mandolin and I tried and tried and tried and I could play a few things but anyway I brought it home with me and uh, he would get that though he wanted to he wanted that you know so I, I let him have it and uh, we would be in bed, and he would come in. I remember him vividly sometimes and what he was wearing. He would come in and stand at the foot of the bed and start singing whatever, raindrops or whatever. And he would strum, and, and he would, it was the same thing. It was no, no playing. He just strummed. And he said, listen, Mom, listen, Papa. And so we would listen, and he would be finished, and we would go, try to go back to sleep. He said, we said, that was good. He said, you want to hear another one? <laughs> so we did that. We knew very early on when he, we would go to different places where they had pianos, he'd sit down. And so finally, a, fellow, a good friend of mine, my campaign manager named Dan Kelly, my wife had done a lot of legal work for him. He wanted to show his gratitude by giving us a piano, a piano for Harry, really. And he sat down there and he would play and play. And, and he would pick out the songs. I think When the Saints Go Marching In was the first song he really played. And he was then he developed like that. But that was when he was six and seven years old. This is an interesting question, I think, because everyone that answers it seems to give a different answer. What is it you like about music? Oh, it, it, I like the, the music that I like. I like the uh, structure of it. I like the, uh, the lyrics to it. The li- lyrics to me, Cole Porter and Johnny Mercer. You were mentioning uh, Rocky Mountain Moon. That's a Johnny Mercer song. Not one of his best songs, but uh, nevertheless a good one. And typical of Mercer, I think. But uh, those, those songwriters uh, had an incredible ability to compose songs that had true, wonderful meaning, and they conveyed a, a particular thought. So that's what I was attracted to. And then the arrangements, I guess, is what, what you know, what impressed the hell out of me, uh, you know, with uh, the Fletcher Henderson and some of those people who arranged for these uh, big bands were just incredible. And then when, when uh, somebody like, like Nelson Riddle comes along and, and some of the things that, that he did, absolutely incredible it's so it's so it draws you it's so listenable and i like that and uh that's what that's what does but that doesn't mean i don't like other kinds of music or that the lyrics are not good it just means that they're not very deep a lot of times there's not not a not a lot of meaning to some of these things and they're too repetitious Mm -hmm. you know and uh but if you listen closely to um to, to 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 the lyrics of uh the songwriters Harry Warren and uh, 
uh, you know, Hammerstein and the, those, the, whatever those people. Uh, and, and, and believe it or not, I think Sammy Kahn, who wrote some very popular pop music, also wrote some 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 wonderful songs, you know, that they're very serious. So, uh, but that that's what I think the combination of, of lyrics and 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 the music, the, the the arrangement plus the melodic aspect of the song it was just. My final question for Mr. Harry Connick Sr. Thanks to the technology, this broadcast is going out all over the world. What would you like to say to all the folks who are listening in? Well, listen to the old folks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you know, get the, they're still available. They're on, on the Internet now, but, you know, the Harry James and, uh, and the good jazz music we have too. And, but above all, and more than anything else, and I'm being very serious, listen to Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and Sr. <senior. laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure.